Good morning, everybody. Kevin here from Watch This with Joe and Kevin, back with episode 12, uh, season two of The Sopranos, definitely getting to the end. Um, I really like the House Arrest episode that I watched last. Um, not only like we get to kind of follow Junior through his struggles with me, with being under house arrest, but the bigger thing to me was Tony's struggles in the last episode in terms of just being with himself. He decides for the sake of looking good at the FBI to spend more time at his businesses. He doesn't really have a role there. So he just sits around and he gets more miserable. And I'm watching the episode thinking why that now that he's gotten past a, a serious threat, right from the police where he was stone cold caught as a murderer. Why is he, why does he seem to be struggling more now that when I feel like he should be doing better. Right. Um, and Dr. Melfi and him have a, just a wonderful, I cannot stress how good that scene was at the end where they're talking and he's, I mean, he's talking about how miserable he is. Um, and she kind of points out, you know, you're what you're not being distracted anymore. Right. So you have to sit there and live with you. Um, and, and you're struggling doing that. Um, he, I mean, it makes sense, right? She mentions, I, I think it was antisocial personality disorder. Tony's a sociopath. Um, he struggles dealing with who he is. So he's, he's always um, busy with work and family and this, his women on the side and drinking. And, you know, as long as he's doing those things to distract himself, he doesn't really have to face himself. Um, the interesting thing about that for me, honestly, is I was thinking about it this week uh, before today is, how do you move forward with that? I don't know. I am by no means an, ex an expert on psychological disorders at all. I have not studied them in any real way. Um, I, I did read an article years ago as a curiosity about sociopathy. And again, I, if I get this wrong, please forgive me. Many of you will know more than I do. Um, but I, for the one thing I remember about it is it's not really considered that treatable. Um, it's it's one of those things where you're kind of hardwired from a young age with it for for you know trauma or what or whatever happened to kind of get you there and there's not an easy way to fix it it's it's just kind of who you are um, in fact I, I, whatever I was reading said that you know there is therapy for it but the, but the therapy that helps the most is generally for the family around you that has to deal with you it's better for, it's like for them to get therapy to know how to handle who you are. Um, because you're just kind of hardwired to have these issues. So I don't know how we deal with that with Tony moving forward, because there there isn't a fix. There's not a pill, right? Um, I don't know how we deal with Tony. I don't, I don't know if it's a thing he just has to consciously change his behavior, I guess. There might be behavior modification stuff you can do. Again, I don't know. Um, but I'm really looking forward to finding out, or if Tony's just kind of resigned to who, the, to, to who he is, um, that this is him. And I don't know how much Dr. Melfi will be able to help him, but I love the fact that they're still getting together and having these conversations. He needs them, and they're very informative for the audience, right? Dr. Melfi is a great character to have along for the ride to kind of help, you know, kind of uh, understand and crack the nut that is a very, very complex Tony Soprano. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it here. I do want to thank all of our Patreon subscribers for being here with us. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Actuarial Lurker, Balas Fuldes, Chris, Jeff, Christy Gaberston, NJ, Sudhir Gundavarapu, Weird Magic, Torgier Lingstad, Emily, Derek Peterson, and Where Panda 47. Thank you so much, guys. We are very glad you're here with us. Um, if you would like to see a full length reaction to this and everything else that we've watched or currently watching, please check out the link in the description below our Patreon page on every show, including. The Sopranos, where at least four episodes out on Patreon of where we're on YouTube. So if you're done watching the YouTube edits and want to continue, you can do it there. You will have to sync and watch along on your own source material. You're only going to see and hear me for copyright purposes. We also just started watching The Wire and Gilmore Girls as we wrapped up other shows. And both are amazing. For those of you who do know a lot more about antisocial personality disorder than me, please let me know some salient details that I don't. Because I find it absolutely fascinating, especially for Tony. How you doing? You want a beer tea? No, no, that's all right. Go join your way through friends. This must all be Richie's family. If he knew we dropped out of college, break his heart. It didn't hurt the Beatles, Bill Gates. His uncle Richie's looking out for him. Yeah. I don't want him around my kids. That's fair. The transmission slipped out of gear. Richie's lucky that he didn't get crushed by the car, too. Oh, come on. Beansy Gator owed him major dollars for 10 years, and Richie wasn't even asking for the interest. Why not? So Janice is in denial. You know, you just can't stand to see me happy, can you? You mother... I just said to you, shut up your ass. 
To be fair, I, I know Tony's terrible, but I find Janice to be a viper. I really do. Runway Limos. He brought Carl Lagerfeld to the store for the drunk shows. Why are you jealous? That's very jealous. What? Finding somebody who can give you everything you want. I told you he drives a limo. Yeah. Talking about a family, marriage, children. No, I don't want to find someone. I have you. <laughs> this is a mess. I'm one out here. I'll die without you. No, you won't. You'll forget about me in two weeks. No, I'm telling you, if you'll go, I'll kill myself. Oh, no, not one of those ultimatums. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. I'm not gonna do it anymore. You talk to that guy about the modeling like I told you. I don't know why I feel bad for her, but I do. Being a hot chief, it was family and whatnot. This is why we have a fixed bid club. Because everyone's got a story about why they should go to the head of the line. Yeah. You respected my father and you respect Richie. Those who want respect, give respect. This is getting so much worse. I want to bring on specialized counsel to handle the wiretap litigation. Ballpark figure? A lot. 400000 That's a lot of money. That coke is my lifeline right now. Break it down, Joe. What choices do you leave us? You need allies to do what you're thinking about. Abba Barisi didn't like what he was hearing. We're doing this again? Larry's had as much time as me to think about why he's under indictment and uh, some other people ain't. So what do you want me to do? Go talk to Ali Boy. I feel like Tony's taking shots at Richie because of Janice, just like he broke up with his girlfriend because of Janice. I, I feel like Janice is really going to be the, the, the linchpin here. I've been thinking about taking some courses while I'm in the can. Psychology, criminology. Maybe go around and give lectures at police departments on OC. None of this is going to happen. This engagement party for the sister? I'm going to want to wire you up. Yeah. Running all over, looking for his kid's science teacher's car. What the f*** is that? Any faith I had went out the window that very day. I don't, I don't think Saul's turning on Tony like this. I think he's playing this guy. That's old stuff. They've definitely been good since then. Carmela, I love the new wallpaper. Do you think I should do my dad? Oh. Hey, do you have that guy's number? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the wallpaper guy. You're in a little bit of denial there, too. Richie was always a disturbed kid. So, Janice, I really don't have a shot anymore. <laughs> I'm glad for you. You should see Ma when we left the house. She really wanted to be here. Can we go back to the part where I was glad for you? Yeah. <laughs> she's a completely different person since the doctors put her on Prozac. Put her on what? So she's on Prozac too? She's just too seen out to remember who she hates. What's wrong with you today? What do you care? Yeah. I don't feel bad for him. I'm just loving everybody's suits here. I really am. They say uh, it's never too late, and they say all good comes to those who wait. How much older is Richie than Janice? God bless. Bravo, bravo. I obviously have not watched the whole show or anything beyond this. I don't know how long poor Carmella goes along with this. You want to be, definitely. God, I'm home. I'm in the shower. I almost didn't hear the phone. Oh, no. She had to go to Kazakhstan to live with uncle. Root, miserable man. Did we not know anything about her? Yeah, she's a real person. What kind of life is there for me without you, Tony? Oh, you're a beautiful young woman. Find, find, a, find a not married man. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. All right. <laughs> It's your mess, man. You made it. Help the girl out. Perfect. Oh, God. <laughs> look at that cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> she does look great, actually. Oh, God. You know, I'm only doing this for the presents. <laughs> You're working overtime here, Carmella. Do you remember how radiant I looked walking down that aisle? You're depressed, aren't you? Yeah. You're going to have to accept a gumar. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah well, well, I'd like to see a gumar that's going to let them hold a gun to her head when they yeah, that's so weird. Well, it's a gun, Janice. I thought you were a feminist. Usually he takes the clip out. Usually? Happy birthday, Chief. Thanks. From Tony Soprano. Never misses an occasion. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to accept gifts, and I know poor people are going to get this, but I can't resist the lard bread. <laughs> All of a sudden, we're the good guys. 
It's the worst case of Stockholm Syndrome I've seen since Patty Hearst. <laughs> It's a great line. <laughs> you talked to the king of Dermabrasion about what went down. I'm talking to him. And he's looking at his reflection in the plexiglass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, some people are stuffing themselves. Some people are out there stuffing themselves. Yeah. I love how this is written. Make a move against Tony Soprano. No way. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Make me jump a little bit. <laughs> Paint shaker. Carmella, hi. Imagine running into you here. <laughs> She's out for revenge, isn't she? Oh, look, Vic, truthfully, I'm not just running into you here. I'm glad she's being honest. And so I wanted to thank you for thinking for the both of us, for being strong for the both of us. Man. Well, you're welcome. <sighs> Goodbye, Vic, and take care of yourself. Letting him know the door is still open. Yeah. Oh, thank Christ. <laughs> Cost me three grand. She should have been seen by the psychiatrist in the hospital. He was a Romanian and they have some beef. Oh my god, come on. The only women I've been through? I don't know why I just don't say fuck her with this one. Why do you think? Well, she's a sweet kid underneath it all and... Yes, she is. You feel for her. I'm interested in why you're ending it. I am too. I don't think I've ever passed judgment on your sex life or any patient's sex life. Even if I'm 20 years older than her and I'm married. This is what he did to her. What's wrong with you? It's all her. But he doesn't care who he follows now. I do him myself. Who's that speaking here? Somebody speaking? Yeah. Nobody wants to hear you. <laughs> we got to screw our courage to the post. Yeah, he's out for blood. <laughs> Go on home. We'll talk. In a proper world, Junior would call Tony right now and say, I don't have enough money to pay for this stuff, and Richie's coming for you. <laughs> but that's not Junior. He couldn't sell it. Richie? Pay attention. You just may learn something here. Who am I best off with? Okay, so Richie's a disappointment here. But Tony, with his impulsiveness and selfishness. I think you should talk to Tony. I think there could be more money for him. What are you looking at? I'm in awe of you. <laughs> I just heard about they're going to jack a load of these Pokemon cards. Moltisanti and another individual. <laughs> he really is playing cop, ascertain. It was a catalog there to be a model for a catalog for salad spinners. Well, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Her prosthetic leg fell off in the Gap store, and her bill picks her up and carries her. Where is my knight in the white satin armor? He makes satin armor. Yeah, psychiatry. Huh, I know what is comes highly recommended. You're gonna feel better if you talk to him. You really should. You are not the boss of me. Okay. You know what? Go f yourself then. Oh no. It's very Bauhaus. And it's not bad. Like the basics cost twenty thousand. Janice, maybe you should slow down on this. Yeah. Nothing. What? Nothing. I just... Is this coming? You're not you're not the you're not the you're not a real man. AJ didn't have the flu. He didn't go with you because Tony wouldn't let him. He doesn't want you around his kid. This is Janice fanning the flames so she can get a nicer house. This is all going to blow up really badly, and Janice is going to be the cause of it. Searchlight Diner, 5.15 a.m. Subject is still not left location. He should not be doing this. 5.16 a.m. Subject's departing Searchlight Diner. Doesn't Christopher know his car and stuff? Like, he's going to know he's the one following him. Well, I guess he has a <laughs> chop shop. He could be driving anything. God. Did you just kill some poor kid on a bike? Playing Serpico? Please oh my stop god. For you. Hello? Tony, I miss you. <laughs> oh my god. I love you. You got the wrong number. Don't call here again. Oh. I'll wait out there. Yeah. Okay, I saw her. But it's not what you think. She tried to commit suicide. This is true. You are putting me in a position where I'm feeling sorry for a who f***ed you? <laughs> I do. He's going to take you out, and Larry Burris, and anybody else who doesn't go along. Oh, wait a minute. What the f*** is Richie telling you all this? He thinks I'm with him. Yeah. That's why I made a big deal of that coke. 
I raised a non-issue and he fell for it. So you're like a double agent now, huh? He yeah, kind of. How do I know you're not playing me? Believe what you want, my little nephew. It's, I mean, this part's true. He's not. He's lying about not being involved, but... I gave you 5% on the action that was lefty. Kick it up to 75 Don't sell drugs on those routes. Short-sighted. I'm glad you gave him more money. It seemed like a small bump, but... You know that asshole's marrying my sister? You gotta wonder where she is in all of this. Oh, you know. My future brother-in-law's caused a serious problem. How serious? Well, he's not satisfied with the current leadership. Yeah. I'm serious myself how this goes down, especially with Janice in the middle of it. What do you think? I can't decide on like that. Janice, come on. Yes. My kid hit me up for five grand today to go to England for these uh, dance contests. <laughs> but little Rick is still coming to the wedding, right? Rick. Rick. Richard. How many times I got to tell you? He's really stre stressed over the money, isn't he? You think your son is gay? And what if he was gay? What difference does it make? Oh my God. <gasps> Oh. That was a full close fist to the face, man. Hey, look at that. You gonna cry now? This is a yeah. This is your future, this animal. Oh no God, way! Yeah. I'm a no move. <laughs> Did that just happen? Where was everybody? AJ is upstairs. Meadows out. I did not see that coming remotely at all. You know, I, I can't say now. Think, think a minute, okay? All right, just stay right there. I'm, I'm gonna be right over. Take her along. Mike, do you wanna get in the car with me? <laughs> Well, that was impulsive. Now she's baby. I get why he's going in arms. He doesn't know what's going on with Richie. Don't hit, hit me. That was an accident. Oh my god. This is actually great for Tony. I did not see this coming at all. I didn't mean it, Tony. I didn't mean it. That was so impulsive. I'm not saying Richie didn't deserve it. He did, but... Janice doing it? If anybody call this in, or there's any shit about this, you don't gotta talk to anybody. Give me the clothes and the shoes you got on. Yeah, it's cleanup time. I was following them to the boost, and then I was gonna call you. What if they would've spotted you? Yeah, they should've. I didn't even use my own car, I switched with my son. You hit a 7-Eleven clerk. How was he? In a coma. Bad. Listen to me. No, look at me. <laughs> you are not an FBI employee, Sal. Yeah, you're a CI. I mean, they were going to kill him anyway. And then I was wondering how Janice was going to take with her fiancé getting killed. Now that's all kind of fixed itself. Hello. Yeah, he's there. Feel better? I had the strangest dreams all night long. Yeah, People bet. coming and going, <laughs> coming and going. I couldn't get up off the bed. Yeah, you were drugged. <laughs> Tony, Anthony, what are you doing here? Nothing. Come on, Janice, let's go. Yeah, he look at her face. He tagged her pretty good. You tell me. Now, you tell me when I ever did anything to any of you. Oh, my God. I wasn't always perfect, but I always tried to do the best I could. I don't believe that. <laughs> I gave my life to my children on a silver platter. I suppose now you're not going to kiss me. What? Guy's yeah, running out on her like he ran out on his girlfriend. Oh! Was she laughing at him just then? I hope not. <laughs> I hope she's actually sad. Not that I wanted to suffer, but it's the cruelty of laughing at it that I don't want to be a thing. You see girls come and go. So I know. Time is the great enemy. That's probably true in that job. It's not good to get too hung up on any one thing. On the other hand, something new always comes along. Take the money and do something else and be happy. <laughs> That's what I want. I'm not gonna forget this, Tony. I owe you. Yeah. God, do I owe you. All in all, though, I'd say it was a pretty good visit. 
I go to a shrink. She says that our mother is a narcissistic personality. Yeah. I used to suggest it and you blow your sack at me. Maybe you ought to think about it. Yeah. What'd you do with him? We buried him. On a hill. Oh. Overlooking a little river. <laughs> what do you care what we did with him? Huh? What do you, you want to know? Oh, I loved him so much. Oh my God, Janice. All right. Go ahead. Tony's just getting rid of all the women in his life. <laughs> I don't think that's the last we're going to see of old Janice. UPS, Meadow, you have cool. a UPS. It's up in your room. What are you doing in here? You've been gone all night. Half the morning. What the hell happened over there? You should tell her. Because Richie is now gone. And they both are. Janice decided to go back to Seattle. Well, what about Richie? He must be devastated. He's devastated. Camilla, 13 years of marriage. Don't make me make you an accessory after the fact. An accessory after the he thinks he did it. I took care of it. That was not a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> oh my god. Are these two gonna get along better now? At least we're not Janice and Richie. <laughs> After Meadows' graduation, me and Rosalie Priel are going to Rome. For three weeks. Yeah. What are people gonna say? You take off for three weeks. You're going to have to chauffeur AJ around to his dentist and whatnot. And you've got to find a tennis clinic for Meadow to join. Wow. What a great episode. Okay, well, from my count, Tony got into it with five different women in this one episode. Um, wow. So his girlfriend, Green, is gone, probably. Uh, Janice is gone, at least for the time being. His wife is leaving for three weeks. He got into a fight with it, with Dr. Melfi again. And got into it with his mom. Interesting that he had the same reaction to, to, to his girlfriend as his mom. It was just like, screw this and walk away. Um, when the, the, the confrontation got very real. Um, and, and, I was assuming from the time we met him um, that the kind of person that he was that eventually Tony and Richie were going to be in uh, in war with each other. I thought it was absolutely coming. At the beginning of the episode, I thought, okay, we're introducing like Richie's son and, 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 and nephew. And so we're, we're, we're meeting guys that are looking like they're on Richie's side. So I was like, okay, we're, we're kind of drawing up sides in an impending war between Tony and and his crew and Richie and his crew. And the only one left to pick a side really is Junior and Janice is kind of in the middle of it. And what great writing that it, none of it went down that way. This show, this episode absolutely shocked and surprised me um, how they handled this. And I think it was utterly fantastic that it completely went against all expectations. I'm assuming you who are also watching the first time you watched this episode, Probably felt exactly the same, right? Hey, we're finally getting this 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 build up um, between Richie and Tony is finally going to happen. And God, what great writing that it, it didn't get to that because Richie, for all of his uh, bravado and all of his bluster, crossed the one person that absolutely was not in the frame of mind to be crossed by him at all. Janice, he punched Janice in the face to get her to stop talking. And she killed him for it. I wasn't surprised that Richie punched her in the face. I, I thought he was verbally abusive. Um, but when he actually hit her, it was it was brutal, right? It was closed fist right into the mouth. Um, but it tracked, right? I, I was I was shocked that he did it, but also was like, this is probably who Richie is. This is you know, this is what your life's gonna be moving forward with this animal. Um I did not see the next part where she picked up the gun and went and, and ended him <laughs> right there in the kitchen. Um, I don't feel bad for him. Um, I, I hope Janice doesn't have access to firearms in the future because, man, she immediately regretted doing it. So it was, you know, obviously completely an impulse decision and guns and impulse really shouldn't ever go together. But what are you going to do? 
Richie uh, David Proval, who was great for his run on the show, was gone. I'm expecting at some point down the road, maybe in later seasons, we might see Janice again. I don't. I, I think she's a tremendous character. Obviously, really well portrayed. Why? What's her name? Tapuro. I can't forget, remember her first name. Um, but uh, we'd love to love to have her back. Obviously, down the road. Um, and I don't know if we what happens now with Tony's mom because with Janice and Richie gone, he was going to take care of her. They've got this new house that they just bought that she's in, plus her old house. I mean, Tony's probably kind of on the hook for whatever happens to his mom now, even though he clearly does not want to be. So, what a mess. And now Junior and Tony seem to be better than they have been. Interesting that Junior really just had to pick a side. Um, it was lucky, right? Because if Junior had sided with, with Richie, I don't know if anything would have gone down at any point, but Richie probably would have died anyway. The thing with Janice would have still happened anyway, regardless of the, convers if the conversation between Tony and Richie happened or not. But, but I mean, sorry, uh, Tony and Junior happened or not, but Junior actually said, you know, went to met Tony and warned him before Richie died anyway. So Junior got himself in good graces with Tony and the outcome was exactly the same, right? He didn't get Richie killed. Richie got Richie killed. So by telling, by, by warning Tony and getting on Tony's side, he kind of helped himself out with, with Richie taking that uh, long walk all by himself anyway. Um, so everything's kind of coming up Junior right now. And maybe Tony, because I was, fairly certain that he was going to destroy his relationship with Janice by killing Richie. And that didn't have to happen. Wow, what a great twist. What a wonderful episode. I cannot wait to see where we follow up with this. And every single woman in Tony's life <laughs> he is just alienating. Um, I mean, I guess he's on good terms with Janice, even though she's out of town. And Dr. Melfi and him fought, but they always do. But but his girlfriend being gone now, Rena, I think's her name, being gone now, and Carmelo very deservedly getting away from him for a minute um, because they have a pretty rocky marriage right now. Um, and Tony and his mother still on the outs and probably going to stay that way. I, I don't see a scenario where they really reconcile. But then again, I didn't see one where Ian Jr. did and they did. So who knows? Um I'm sure if they do end up kind of working things out, Dr. Melfi's going to have a big role in it. Um, and I, I really hope uh, Rena is going to be okay moving forward. Um, girl, you can do better than Tony. <laughs> you can do better than a, mar than a married man who, doesn't, who hasn't been nice to you. At least we haven't really seen it. Um, they mostly fight. Um, you know, go on and find something else to make yourself happy. <laughs> what a great episode. I've been thinking about this one for a while. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.